Hello everyone, so in today's video I'm starting a, a new job, I mean it's a job that I've done the first fixing on, I didn't bring you any videos on this one because uh, I've got quite a few first fix videos on my channel already. So we've got a little bungalow here, and when I say little it really is little, a little two bed bungalow, uh, it's all been plastered out now, obviously all the stud work's done, door linings are in. And what I'm going to do here is walk you through the sort of various stages of what we call second fixing. If you're a carpenter, you'll know what that means. Basically, second fixing is fixing all of the, the main kind of bits you see, like the doors, skirtings, architrave, kitchen, wardrobes, and uh, was a laminate floor going down in this instance. So the first job that I'm going to do today is get these. I'll just turn the camera around. We've got these um, sort of pretty standard oak doors that I'm going to fit, so we've got uh, five of those, I think, uh, six actually, five and a pair, so we've got a glazed door which is going to go on this sort of uh, uh, hallway door here which will hopefully steal a bit of light down into the corridor. We've then got, this is the main entrance, we've got a pair, uh, two foot uh, wide doors going on there, uh, two foot nine into one bedroom, and we've also got some sliding wardrobe doors to go on there. Bathroom here, two foot nine again on here, and then a two foot nine uh, wide door into the second smaller bedroom. And again, we've got wardrobes in here. So I've prepped up all my door linings with a little jig that I made, and I did do a little video on it. So where is it? It's here somewhere. Can I find it? Nope. There, here it is. Look. So I did a little video on uh, on this jig, and it's really handy just for quickly marking out my architrave uh, setbacks and also uh, 36 mil, which is the width of the door. So I'll just temporarily uh, pin a stop on the top there. Um, I've got uh, pretty easy stuff really, door hanging. I've got this trend, where are we? Yeah, look, a trend hinge jig, a little palm router, which is living in there. When it comes to second fixing, there's a certain order. I think everyone has um, an order they prefer, but for me, it's always doors on first. I know some people put the architraves on first, but that then means you can't adjust the door lining when you're hanging the door. I know the door lining should be good. The door linings are good here because I put them in, so there should just be a leading edge off the door. Maybe just check the, the width of the bottom and then put the jig on it and hang it. So for, the order for me is I put the doors on first, then I put the latches on, then I put the door stops on, uh, and then I'll go around the bedrooms, put the architrave on and the skirting on. But we'll come to that, you know, maybe in this video, maybe in another video. Maybe I'll do a series of videos, you know, showing my process of first, of uh, second fixing. So anyway, that's enough waffling for now. I'm going to get set up and start to put these doors on. Always do a quick damage check on doors, and um, they're always pretty good. I think these are from Howden's. It's always best to do a damage check because if you get a little mark or something, potentially it's not too bad. You can always stick it uh, in the backside in the room so when the door's open, you don't see it rather than you know not seeing some damage and putting it where it's the most obvious place the way you walk through the door. So this one looks all right. One thing that we don't need to worry about with these doors 
is which side the lock block is. And when I say a lock block, usually where your hand and the lock goes on most doors that are like the, the sort of more common pressed contractor doors, uh, there's a block that goes in to strengthen the area where the lock and the latch goes or latch goes. We don't need to worry about checking where that is in this instance because these are sort of solid core doors, but normally we double check on the top of the door there'd be a little some printed that say lock. But if not, what we used to do just to make sure is we tap the door as well, um, just to physically make sure the lock block was in there because those hollow doors you can tell where it's from, where the lock block is. So, so what I'm looking to do here now is see how it fits in the lining. I've got to jack it up a little bit, see what the head's like. And I think as I've said in one of my other videos, I allow 22mm off the bottom of the doors here. That suits any type of carpet that we put on. And I've got a space here that's 22mm wide. What I'll do is jack this door up. Um, the gap I'm looking for is about 2 to 3mm. So once I've got a 2 or 3 mil gap on the top there, I've usually got an old 2p coin actually that I shove in there. I'll then run this along the bottom with a pencil and then I'll know if I've got to take it off the door. So let's get on and get this checked up. It's looking pretty good as I said because I've put the linings in. So pretty much all we need to do is take a leading edge off one edge, check the bottom doesn't need any off it, and then we can put the jig on it and wrap out the hinges. are upright, plumb and obviously a lot of the work can be done in the linings because if you don't do a good job of the linings you've then got extra work through all the doors so yeah really happy with that. Uh, fits nice and down. This side, this side there's obviously as you can see there's quite a big gap but that gap's going to be split in two. So yeah that's really really good. Time to get to come off the bottom. Right back on the bench. back on the stalls and you can see I've marked the bottom so we need to what's that about 10 mil got to come off so what I'm going to do here make it nice and easy on myself uh, I've got my Makita track saw oh, that's all set up so I'm just going to put that on there rip that off and then I'll just tidy the edge back up the block plane just to take the sharp edges off You'll see from that what I actually do is take it through in a couple of passes, not because the saw's not strong enough, just that these have got quite thin curved blades in them. And when you try and take off, you know, 35mm or one more go, the blade I've found can start to wander. So um, the first pass I put, this is what a scribe cutting uh, facility on it. So the first pass was a scribe cut, just a really um, shallow cut so it doesn't break out the top layer of veneer and then the next pass down is halfway through and then the last pass is all the way through so fabulous bit of kit for this makes things so much easier fairly new to the game with the track saws which I've said in a, another video just take the block of bone in there When it comes to putting the leading edge on, I know there's router cutters you can buy that have got the set angle of the leading edge. But basically, I kind of, through years of experience, uh, just do it by sort of eye 
we're only going to take a tiny bit off. The lean lid doesn't need to be too big, just enough to allow, because from the, the, the point of the hinge, the two edges of these doors basically pass through different circumference. So we have to take a leading edge off so that they both pass through the same circumference so that when the door shuts, it doesn't bind on the front edge. Uh, right, so this. I don't know if that's the best shot for that, is it? You move that a bit. Is that a bit better? Yeah, try that. Right. As I've said many times, I'm not a filmmaker, so I hope you can see this. <laughs> I've only got the plane as set as you can see that. The plane is only set to, it's not even half a millimetre, so just a series of small passes down through there. Don't want to go mad, like I said. These door linings set, the door lining head that comes in the kit sets the width of the door lining, and these are actually a tiny bit wide, these door linings, so we don't want to be taking any extra off the width of the door, so just that leading edge. So. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'll just ease that. We've made a sharp edge on here now, so I'll just ease that off the bottom. And now what I'm going to do, because and yeah, anyone who's in the trade will know this, these knives on this planer, each time they go round, they, they basically make a little scoop that comes out of the timber, and they're called pitch marks. Um, now, obviously, the faster you go, the faster you push the plane, the, the bigger those chip marks will be, or the further apart they'll be. You can go quite slow, and if you've got a really nice, sharp set of knives, you tend not to leave too many pitch marks at all. But what I do, um, just because these are clear coated, and to be honest, it's something I do on all doors, I've now got a belt sander which I'll just run down there, takes all those pitch marks out, makes uh, leaves a really nice, smooth job. So I'll get my belt sander and quickly run that over now. There, all those pitch marks gone after the belt sander's been down. Lovely, nice finish for the Osmo oil, I think, is going to go on these. Now, just flip that over and we can get the hinge jig set up. Oh. I don't know how much these weigh, but they don't seem to get any lighter. Right, right. Let's get the hinge jig set up. Right, I've got this one piece trend jig here and all over, it's quite simple to set up really. I've got my butt, uh, this is a four inch butt, it's actually a hundred mil. Uh, and then what they give you is a small spacer that you basically set these, these are these sort of blocks in here and they're adjustable. And you set them so that they're the same size as the hinge plus this packer. And that uh, packer is what allows the difference between the cutter in the bottom of my router and the guide, uh, guide bush. So it's really simple. Just and this probably videos on the internet show it better than better than this, but you simply push that packer in there, slide this out. Try and do it. Can you still see that? Yeah. Slide that out, and then just nip it up. That's it. So that's in there. Just nice. I mean that's. Fairly snug in there, it's maybe too tight. Just loosen that a tiny bit. Let's try that. Lovely. Right, do the same to the other two, and then this will be set up ready. So, this jig just attaches to the edge of this door with these sort of, they look like little bradles, but they're just sort of fixing pins. What I find is in these hardwood doors, and you can see I've put some extra packers on here, is that basically that's a lot to just hammer into the sort of hardwood edge. So what I do on these doors is I just put a small pilot drill in first, just to 
just help it a little bit because what I find you can hammer these in but then try and pull them out it's really difficult so you still get still get plenty of grip but it just means they're quite easy to get out right so now that's the jiggle set up now we've just got to set the router up which is pretty simple so I'm just using my Makita palm router here and I use the plunge base you need to use a plunge base with uh, with these uh, hinge jigs they pretty much uh, work with a, this is a guide bush that goes to the bottom, 16mm guide bush and that's a specific uh, 12, I think it's a 12mm cutter, it's got a longer shank obviously because it has to drop all the way down through this jig, so just a couple of screws to undo there and that bush then fits in there, fit that cutter into the trimmer and then we can just set the depth of cut for the hinge which I'll get those done and I'll show you how to do that. So the cutter's in, the guide bush is in and I've put the trimmer body into the plunge base and you can see what I've done here is basically dropped, I've dropped the cutter down and if you can just see there, can we see that? I've dropped the cutter down until it hits the top edge of this door so that we know then that that is the sort of the zero mark so if we were to use that router there it would just skim the face of the door so what we need to do now is use our depth stop um, facility here to basically set the thickness of the hinge in there and then that will then allow that to drop down the thickness of the hinge into this door and make the cut right. so here it is this is set as i just explained so all we need to do now i'm trying to do this for the camera i should be able to just roll that out look so all we need to do is i tell you what uh, yeah that one be right Hang on. Don't drop anything. So now a simple case. All we need to do is make sure that that, if you can see that, that that uh, thickness of that hinge leaf uh, fits into that gap there. There it is. Look. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. Just a tiny, tiny bit more. Right. So that now fits in there. Look. So we can lock that off. And then we know that when we now, I'm trying to do this one handed here, look. So we now know that when we unlock this and we push that down, you see that? That just pushes that in, that cutter goes in that extra little bit, which is the thickness of the hinge down into the door. So we're all set now, so we can put a battery on this. So say when you're doing this setting up, make sure you know don't put a battery in because that'll have your fingers off. So. This is all set up, so what we can do now is do, uh, we can plunge the housings in on the door and we can uh, make sure that it's, the hinge fits nicely. If there's any adjustments, we can, we can make them before we move on. Sorry, I should just actually say that um, the, the width of the jig is also adjustable with these two little stoppers here. And I should just actually say that uh, this is a four inch butt and uh, sorry, a hundred mil butt. And this was previously set up for four inch butts with the same uh, width uh, leaf. So um, I did skip that part, but I don't need to worry about setting uh, how far the hinge goes in because it's already set. Just thought I better mention that. Uh, again, you need to set the width of it, but it's set in this case. That's all those cut in. <coughs> now all I have to do, because it's a round cutter, we just have to clean the corners out. So I've got a special little corner cutting chisel, which is called for that. <coughs> yeah. Obviously, these are four-inch butts on a 35 mil wide door and they take uh, quite a lot of the width up, so not particularly my choice, but it's what the builder wanted, so we have to do what we're told to do. So yeah, we put that, put that little corn chisel there and that takes us out an absolute trick. Just to get it. 
little chisel just whip the rest of that out. And then finally, just a little bit of scratch, just to take, just to ease the sort of fluffy edges off. brilliant I'm pretty happy with the depth that that's the only thing that we might want to adjust the, these hinges pretty much set the when we put the top side of this hinge leaf in flush with the door obviously the gap is then set by the hinge here now depending on whether you want tighter gaps or wider gaps you can obviously um, we can adjust that purely by either making the housing for the hinge slightly deeper or slightly shallower but generally what we're aiming for is for this uh, hinge leaf to be flush with the top of the not only the door but the lining so fingers crossed uh, we'll get the hinges mounted onto we'll get the hinges mounted onto this door and then we'll get the um, what we'll do now sorry I'm not making any sense now so what we'll do now is we'll get the hinge, uh, hinge jig attached to the door lining and we'll route those out, do exactly the same as what we've done on the door, we'll fix the hinges to the door and then we can uh, offer the door in and get it screwed in. Hopefully it will fit perfectly. So I'm just going to fix the hinges to the door, obviously what I do here is I pre-drill them first, I think this is a 2 mil uh, drill bit, otherwise um, if you try and fire them straight in uh, to the hardwood edges like this, two things will happen. Firstly, you might split the door. Secondly, you'll probably break the screws because they're, they're not the best quality screws that come in these hinge packs. So, yeah, just uh, pre-drill first. And obviously, I know this has been a million times, but um, you put the leaf with the, you've got each of these leaves, one's got sort of two poles on it, one's got uh, three. You put the one with two on it uh, onto the door, the one with three goes on the lining. Quite traditional, I think, so. I haven't got a, uh, I've been told many times before, I haven't got a, do that, I haven't got a centering drill and I should really get one, I've never ever used one but I tend to just spot these pretty accurately but I must get myself one, I'm not saying I should look fabulous, just use the countersunk of the hinge to accurately drill the pilot hole. driver for these screws but again some of these screws aren't particularly great quality these have got a Phillips head on them not our usual posi head so a Phillips 2 head I start with the impact driver if it looks like these are going to get mashed or look like they're going to break I'll, I'll change to a normal drill because then you get more feeling but you need to be careful because with these and anyone who does this will know sometimes you only get one go with these and once the head's stripped out you're, um, you're knackered because these can be as I said not the greatest quality snaps off. You have to have 
got some quite good uh, trigger control on these impactors. So. Handle with these impactors, they can uh, cause all kinds of damage. There we go. It's always good. Always good to have a nice, sharp, or fresh uh, screwdriver point in as well. It helps grip the screw and avoid it sort of coming out. Said they're not the best quality screws. Right, that's brilliant. Let's go to the let's go to the lining now. Right, we're going to see what goes now. I just uh, we'll turn the on the top of this jig. It's got this sort of flap that you pull out uh, when you're putting on the door. Obviously, the door, the top of the door, uh, butts up to that flap there. But when we're doing it against the lining, we obviously uh, fold it round so it's flush with the jig. So a really simple case here. Um, I'm not going to pre-drill uh, for these. I think what you call them, grab or sort of hold the spike things because it's only softer. So you just put it on up to the butt, uh, up to these stops, push it tight up, and then bosh, straight in. What I'm going to use here is uh, I've got a spare hinge, <coughs> so I'm just going to put the bottom pilot hole in each hinge position so that when I open the door and I can get one screw in each hinge.
by hand. And uh, I've always enjoyed hanging doors, but you don't have to worry about them lining up here with the G. It's just absolutely perfection every time. Unfortunately, uh, I think that's taking a bit of the, um, the skill out of door hanging, if I'm honest, using the G's, but it's quick and efficient, and that seems to be what the industry, like most industries, seems to be dictating now, speed. Chop, 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 chop. Right, so let's just have a little look, see where we're at. Yeah, really, really good. Quite a big gap on the flapping side here, but as I said earlier, unfortunately, that's because that's been set by the door lining heads. So I think what I might do, again, which is why I put the architraves on afterwards, I may well just I may well just wedge that frame out a little bit just to shut that gap down. Let's have a quick look, I'll show you. Yeah, so we've got a nice gap all the way around there, and but slightly big gap here, look. So what I'll do is probably just wedge that frame over a little bit. So again, you can you can adjust it, it's not the end of the world if you need to adjust your frame, that's the whole reason that. I put the doors on first. So yeah, really, really happy with that. Get the rest of those screws in, give that little wedgie, and then move on to the next one. As you'd expect, put all those screws in there, as you'd expect, look, absolute sort of perfection from there. Uh, you know, using the jig for those uh, hinges, really nice tight uh, housings there. What I think I'm gonna do, you can maybe just see them, and the lights are very good. I might just pull the router cutter out, just, I don't know, half a millimeter maybe. A tiny bit look just help shut this gap down. I know it's only tiny, but I think I'm just going to do that because all of these linings are all the same, they've got quite wide heads in. So, yeah, I think I'll just pull the just half a turn on that adjust on the on the plunge base. Um, so that's brilliant. So, yeah, um, get on with some more now. I'll show you quickly uh, what I've done. So be our little secret. Uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with this at all. So, what I've actually done, you can see, I've just Put a little wedge behind each of the hinges. That's pushed the whole door across a little bit. Look, still hasn't really affected my gaps at all. And what that's done, look, is shut that gap up. I've got a tiny little wedge in there, tiny little wedge in there, you see. And now what we've got is a much nicer gap all the way around there. So again, I know I've said it once already, but that's the reason why I put my doors on first and architraves on afterwards, because if the architraves on first, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to sort of adjust that door. Um, it's not. There's nothing wrong with that, and some people actually, I know this for a fact, some people, uh, when they fit their door, door linings, all they do is they fit their hanging leg in plumb, put the head in level, and then leave the flapping side leg loose, um, hang the door into the, obviously the hanging side, and then just literally wedge the flapping side leg up to it. So, you know, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but. You know, just these little wedges here can help you just make any tiny little adjustments. And it may even be actually that, you know, we all do it. You may even make a mistake and maybe if you're playing the lean edge on the wrong side, as, as I've shown in another video, I always put a little bit of tape in the corner so, uh, you know, I don't forget. But, you know, we've all done it where, you know, we've, we've set the door up in the stalls and gone to playing the leading edge and maybe had a phone call or a tea break or something and come back and take it off the wrong edge. And if, if that's the case, you know, the door may end up being too narrow. But again, even if you make that mistake, it's not the end of the world because you can, you can still wedge your lining over it. And I know you might say, well, you can't wedge it over any at the top, but you could actually put a series, I've done it before, when I was younger, made the odd mistake here and there, you can put a saw cut through the top of the head there and you can still wedge this across. So there's all kinds of things you can do, even if you do you know, have a mishap. But anyway, that's looking fabulous now. I'm going to get the other the other ones done. Oh, there was one quick other thing I'll say, uh, just to part of my process. You'll notice this door here is almost the furthest door away, the most awkward door from where I'm actually hanging my doors. Now, if this was a much bigger place, a much bigger building, what I'd probably do is um, set up in sort of a different room, do four or five doors, and then move you know down to the other end. But because this bungalow is quite small. Um, I'm just going to stay set up in one place. So what I do is just the way I like to do it. I always like to try and get the most sort of the hardest things out of the way first. So rather than start with a nice easy one right next door to where you're, you know, doing your shooting, um, I do the furthest one away so I can work my way back um, to the last one being the easiest one, which is when probably you're the most tired.
That's another one biting dust. I haven't had to take 22 mil off the bottom of this door like the others because it's got laminate flooring in it, so we know that this laminate floor is only about 10 mil. So, so look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Yep, absolutely fantastic. Just that pair to do now. So when I'm preparing a frame to hang my doors, what I do, and everyone does things differently, is I cut and temporarily uh, pin the head stop in position. Um, it sort of kills two birds on stone, it gives you something to fit the door against, but also it cuts the head ready. Uh, and once the doors are all fitted, we can then just pull these pins out and, and put the stop in the correct place and pin it out properly. And then at the bottom here, um, normally what I do is I have some off cuts of this door stop, I'll just pin that to the bottom as well, but I didn't have any in this case because there's no materials laying around. Just got one of these little sort of chocolate blocks that I just screw on, so that just enables me, gives me something to push the door back to uh, while I'm fitting it, so just the way I do it. One more to go. Lovely. Right, let's see what that's like. That's good. That one. Oh, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Might just tease, just tease the edge off there, which I can do with that door open. So, excellent. Right, so, uh, don't know if you can see me there. That's all those doors on. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six doors just gone midday, so I'm really happy with how that's gone. We've got lots of things to make our job really, really easy. Um, and as I said earlier, I think the, perhaps the skill of door hanging has gone a little bit with planers and jigs and routers and stuff, but you know, that's, they've gone on really nicely. It makes a big difference that the, I put my own linings in, so there's very little to plane off the doors, just the leading edge. Tiny bit of adjustment here and there, which you know is par for the cause. Um, but really, really happy. The next job for these doors will be the latches and the handles. I'm not going to do a video on those because I've already done quite a comprehensive video on my channel. You can check that out here. Uh, I might leave a link to the description to that in the description box below. And also I've done another one, how to fix uh, bolt through handles. I've done a video on that as well, so you can check that out. So I won't be doing videos on those because I don't want to have too much repetition on the channel. The next uh, video that I do will probably be skirting an architrave, which I'll show you. We're going to do the two bedrooms um, because the decorator's coming in. These are um, obviously unfinished oak doors. And although the moisture content's pretty, the, there's not too much moisture in this, it's still a new build. And if we leave these uncovered for too long, um, they'll start to swell. So the decorator's coming in tomorrow. I'm going to put a couple of coats of Osmo on those to protect those. And I'm going to get some skirting and architrave done in the two bedrooms, as I said. And I'll show you a video of that. The other job that I might do just while I'm at it is we've got the wardrobes that I pointed out earlier and um, we've got to put a shelf and some maybe some partitioning and stuff in there. I don't quite know yet what the builder wants but definitely a shelf with a hanging rail underneath. There's a shelf to go in this cupboard behind me and some little pointy um, shelves down into this 45 degree bit and obviously there's a wardrobe uh, shelves to do in the other bedroom as well. So. That will be hopefully what I'll be bringing you in the next video. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, thanks for watching.